everybody. We're in God's word today. And today we're going all the way back to the Old Testament. Remember that the Bible, God's word, is split into two sections. The Old Testament before Jesus came and the New Testament, Jesus' life, and then the life of the disciples after that. And the story continues because we're part of that history. We're just not in the book, but we're in his book. If you are a believer, do you know that God has a book in heaven with all the names of those that are his children? How exciting is that? So back to God's word, the Old Testament, we are in the book of Esther. This is one of my favorite books in God's word. And you know what really neat thing about it? Not once is God's name mentioned in it. What? How could that be? It's in God's word because this story, the author wrote it in such a way that you have to be paying attention. And then you will see God is all over it. His hand, his um, his control, his power, his plan, nothing can thwart Almighty God. And he is all over this book from the beginning to the end. The people, what happens, the circumstances, the plot twist, it twists and turns and it changes back and forth. It is a really exciting book and I'm so excited to start um, sharing it. It with you today. So we start, the book starts in the kingdom of Persia. Maybe you've heard of that kingdom. Sometimes we talk about Persian rugs are really expensive, but really nice to have. So Persia was a kingdom way far from Israel. Remember God's people, that special family that God created through which he would send his son way in the future. So it'd been about a hundred years that the Israelites, the Jewish people, the Jews, were, it were in Persia. And it started way back with, Bab uh, with Babylonia. Remember we've talked about that? That when God's people would take their eyes off of him and maybe start copying all the bad, evil, wicked things that the nations around them were doing. And God would have to lift his protection, his hand off his people, and then be captured and taken off to exile, taken off as captives. Well, these were some of the people that were still there. Ezra and Nehemiah before this had taken some back, but some Jews stayed in this area. But now it's not Babylon. They were taken over by the Persians. So that's where the story starts. And it says, King Ahasuerus. Sometimes he's called Xerzi. That's his Greek name. But we'll go with what Esther, the book of Esther calls him Ahasuerus. So it says Ahasuerus was the king and this king liked to throw big, big parties. And listen to why he liked to throw these big parties. He says, when he showed the riches of his glorious kingdom and the honor of his excellent majesty, many days. And you know how many days this party was? You're not going to believe it. This party that the, the book of Esther starts with was 180 days. What do you do in a party for 180 days? So this feast that King Ahasuerus threw, people stay in the palace and he gives food. And I, I, guess, I would imagine there's entertainment and lots of entertainment and drinking and fancying and food. 180 days. And what did God's word says? He wanted to show his riches and his glorious kingdom. So it was pretty much a showing off party. So he's showing off to all of his princesses, to all the royal people, because he had so much, um, his kingdom was so big, so much territory that he had to divide it and put princes, princes in all those territories. So they came to celebrate 180 days. And the Bible also tells us that after those 180 days were over, he had another feast for seven more days. And God's word goes on to tell us that on the seventh day, the king was so excited and he commanded his officers, go get the queen. And the queen, her name was Vashti. And Vashti was having her own feast in the women's house with all the royal women. And she was having her own feast. So the king commands, go get my queen. I'd like to show her off. Remember, that's the kind of king he was. He liked to show things off. Go get Queen Vashti, my queen. I'd like to show her to all of my guests. But guess what Queen Vashti said? No. She wasn't going to go. He sends his officers to go get Queen Vashti. And Queen Vashti has the audacity to say no. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us why Queen Vashti said no. But she did. And you've got to know that when we're talking about a kingdom and the guy in charge, and when he calls you and you say no, there's going to be consequences. So listen to what happens. The, the king is so angry. 
It, the Bible says wrath. I mean, that's furious that he commanded something of Queen Vashti. And she said, no. Could you imagine that? So he asked his men, what in the world are we going to do about this queen? And now his princesses are saying to him, well, king, you certainly need to do something about this queen because what kind of king gives an order and people don't follow? And you know what they tell him? These are his wise men, which he sought counsel from. And he said, and when our wives found, find out that your wife doesn't even listen to you, what are they going to do? So his wise men said, you have got to do something about this. So listen to what they did. He made a royal commandment and he said, you should, then Fashti, um, come no more before King ah ah Ahasuerus. And he, she said, Vashti is no longer queen. Come no more before the king. That's what his wise men told to do. And let the king give her royal estate unto another. Give all her stuff. She had a house. She had servants. She had property. Whatever she had, the wise men said, give it to somebody else. Somebody better than she, they told him. So the king was so angry and he says, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. And the wise men's like, yeah, that's, that sounds like a good idea. So the king wrote a letter to all the land that Vashti was no longer queen. And listen to it, this, and, she, and the, the commandment of the king, the royal commandment said, every man should bear rule of his own house. So it said, and every man on top of that needs to be the, the ruler, the boss, the master of everything in their house. Now, God's word does say and gives us examples of how a household, a marriage, a family is supposed to run. But it's not like that. It's not with that anger and, and, um, and wickedness in the heart. So that edict goes out. But guess what? And that's all fine and dandy when he was angry and then all his guests left. But now the king is all alone. And the Bible tells us that he starts to wonder, wow, now what? I have no queen. And he remembers Queen Vashti. And maybe even think, maybe it was a little harsh on her. Maybe she had a good reason. The Bible didn't even tell, doesn't tell us if maybe the, the king even found out why she didn't want to come. Maybe she had a really good reason. But all that to say, no more Queen Vashti. The king is alone. Now what? So listen to what happens. So now his men again say, we have a plan. We have to have a plan because a king really needs a queen. And all the women of the palace, and there just needs to be a queen. So this is what they come up with. These men come up with this idea. Why don't we gather all the fine, beautiful young ladies of all the kingdom? Send out, send out your officials and bring out all the beautiful young ladies from your kingdom unto you, and then you pick which one you like. Hmm, sort of like a beauty pageant, I guess. But listen to this. Those young ladies couldn't come before the king unless they were 12 months in a beauty treatment. Six months, the Bible says they were, they were, I guess, covered or rubbed or, or dunked in oil of myrrh, which is some really strong, sticky stuff. I can't even imagine what that feels like. And another six months in another kind of perfumes and oils. That was a beauty treatment. A whole year in a beauty spa before they could even come before the king. So the time comes and they bring one young lady at a time, one fair young lady at a time before the king. And this is where we see God moving because it happens that in the kingdom, remember those Jews that stayed back and were in the kingdom of Persia, there was one family. The two characters are Mordecai and his cousin Esther. Esther, when she was young, her parents passed away and Mordecai, her cousin, raised her like his daughter, the Bible says. And she was a fair young lady. Actually, she was a very beautiful young lady. So when they were gathering up all those ladies in the kingdom, guess what? Esther was one of them. But her cousin Mordecai said, Esther, don't tell them that you're Jewish. Don't tell them that you're one of God's children. Don't tell them that you're a follower of God. Keep that to yourself. Even so, she didn't even say who her family was because we find out later that the king and his officials didn't even know that Mordecai was her cousin. So Esther gets taken off and all these ladies get taken off. It doesn't tell us if the ladies were happy about her or wanted to do it, but the king, that was the king's decree. So those ladies were swept up. And listen to what it says about Esther. And it says, when it was Esther's turn to go before the king, she had spent that year in those beauty treatments with the oils and all that stuff. The Bible says, and the king loved Esther above all the women. Hmm. Could you imagine? I would imagine there was hundreds of them because that was a really big kingdom back then. 
But the Bible tells us, what did it say? And the king loved Esther above all women. Now, right there, when I hear, read something like that, that above all, that there's, and right before it said, Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. That's where I see God. That's God's hand because she's just a girl. And it would have been more of a lowly peasant type girl because they were the Jews in that society. They were the foreigners and they were disliked by a lot of people. But for this young lady to be the one that the king above all the other young ladies was chosen, that's God's hand. Because you see, nothing can stop God's purpose. Now we have so much to talk about in the book of Esther. But here's the thing, I can't squeeze it all in one video, otherwise it'd take forever. But know this, Esther, the Jewish young lady, is now queen. And God's got such a purpose for her, such a plan for her life. God is behind the scenes moving all this. And this was step number one, the removal of Vashti, and now his Jewish princess, the queen of all the land. What? is God up to. You don't want to miss it because it's an incredible story. Come back next time and find out what God's hand continues to do because his purpose for Esther, just like his purpose for you and me, cannot be thwarted. God is always in control. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.